Hey, what's going on? I'm Jason Park. I'm a feature filmmaker. And today I wanted to discuss with you all, you know, what it's like or what, how you should go about making your first film. So let's say you're a young filmmaker, you're an older filmmaker, you're aspiring, you've shot a few short films, maybe you haven't shot a short film, but you have this idea that you want to shoot, right? Where should you start? That's the big question. Where should you start? So this is like a part one in maybe a series that I'll do to continue on to kind of give you an idea, right? A discussion of the process of what it's like to go and make your own indie film, right? And that's a good starting point. So before anything else, we have to start with the script. We have to start with a story and you have to be realistic with yourself, right? There's nothing wrong with dreaming. There's nothing wrong with big lofty goals, but you have to be realistic with yourself. As you're going and you're in the process of writing your script, ask yourself these simple questions. Do I have any connections to anybody in the industry? Um, once this script is made, can I get it into the right hands, uh, to the right context to even pitch the script? And then number three is, do I have people that I know that can finance this project? Those three questions are extremely important and I'm going to tell you why. Because if the answer is no to all three, then you, my friend, have won the prize of being an indie filmmaker, right? We're not talking about Hollywood indie where it's like, oh, you know, we threw a B-list actor in here and we had a million dollar budget or a $300,000 budget or a $100,000 budget. We're not talking about the Hollywood indie, right? We're talking about real indie cinema. So if you don't have someone that can finance your project, then okay, maybe you have a contact. If you don't have a contact in the industry, then what do you do and where do you go from there? Well, don't fear anything. I've done this a few times. Um, been in the industry since 2006 in front of the camera and then started making my own films around 2019. So with that in mind and with that knowledge, what you want to do is when you write your script, I want you to look around at your family, your friends, uh, acquaintances, locations that you have access to, locations that you know you can get. And once you formulate that idea of this playground that you can work with, the tools within your playground to work with, then you go and write your script based on those locations and, and things that you can get access to. Because from there, you know that you and a group of friends, a group of local theater actors or local actors, you guys can go and make that project. So, <clears throat> so you could always have two versions of one script, <clears throat> right? You can have the very elaborate, expensive version, and then you can have the alternate, I don't wanna say cheap, but you can have the alternate version that you know that you can do, right? So as an indie filmmaker, you're gonna probably do the alternate version, but if somehow during that process you come into con uh, contact with somebody that's a producer or, or knows someone at Warner Brothers or Universal and they're looking for a project just like this, you have the expensive one to pitch, right? But if you're gonna go down the, the road of an indie filmmaker, then you gather your troops, you, grab, you gather your actors, your creative people. It doesn't matter if they're actors or not. They could be friends, aunties, uncles, family members. It just doesn't matter, right? Because your first film, it's, it's gonna do a few things. It's gonna fast track you to film school and you're gonna learn so much from that first film. And then you're gonna build the confidence to go ahead and do a second film. So once you finish that script, I want you to go through that 90 page script. It doesn't even have to be 90, it could be an 80 page script. You go through that script and you start placing people, right? You start casting your friends, family, actors. Okay, Jonathan's going to place um, Jacob. Susan's going to play Jesse. You know, Veronica's going to play Rachel. It just doesn't matter. You start breaking down the script. So then from that script, you know that you have a Bible. You have a guide that you can follow to make your feature film because once you have that story you're already on your way right if you're 18 years old 
19 years old, and you want to make movies, my best advice for you is to do it now. Start now. If you're older, 30s, 40s, start now. Just when you get to that point in life where we're all gonna retire from this physical form and you're on that deathbed, if you get the chance to grow old and be on that deathbed, you don't ever wanna look back and say, man, I wish I would have at least tried. Because if you try and fail, you can live with that. Like, I haven't made, you know, profits from any of my films. I have Pizza Boy Rick and, and Always Smile releasing later this year, next early next year. But, and then we're going now into production into Rhino King. I haven't made profits. And you may ask, okay, well, why do you keep making films? I don't make films, like it would be nice to make millions of dollars. It'd be nice to get those Hollywood connections. It'd be nice to get that universal distribution or three picture deal. It would be nice. But if it goes back to why do I make films? I make films because I enjoy it. I know the people that I make films with, they enjoy it. And at the end of the day, you know, when we're old and we're dying or, or in the middle of a conversation or anything, we can always say we made films. We made movies that we enjoyed and, and we liked. And some movies turn out good and some movies don't turn out good, right? Like Rex Park, um, it, it's not that good, but you know, if you watch it stoned, it's pretty damn funny. Four Amigos, that version uh, has some amateur shots, but when I recut it to Fast Atlanta and I took some of that out, it's a much better cut. Pizza Boy Rick is much better than the previous two and then Always Smile so far is the best film, right? Aesthetically and everything. Um, but you wanna start with your script. You don't wanna regret anything. You wanna, you wanna start with that script and you wanna let that be your Bible. And when you finish that script, carry that momentum, carry that energy with you into getting it done, all right? So that would be the first step is start with your script, start with what you know and write a story that's you. Don't try to be Quentin Tarantino. Don't try to be Christopher Nolan. Don't try to be Spielberg. Be you. Because every story has already been told. The only thing that hasn't been told is your perspective on that story, right? Your sauce, your flavor. Be you when you write and, and, and be you when you make the project. It doesn't mean that you can't bite from other cinematographers or directors, but be you. So what I'm gonna do next time is I'm gonna talk about how to break down that script and get it ready for production. I'm Jason Park, this is Hyper2 Productions, thank you.